Now, a few lectures back, we spoke about cholecystitis. But today, we're going to be talking about cholecystitis, a common and clinically significant condition. Cholecystitis refers to the presence of gallstones stuck in the common bile duct. Now, this topic is pivotal in understanding the biliary tract disease, which are frequently encountered in clinical practice. First, let's do a quick anatomy recap. The liver produces bile essential for fat digestion, as we previously discussed. Bile flows through the hepatic ducts, converging into the common bile duct, and eventually draining into the duodenum. The gallbladder attached to the biliary tree stores and concentrates bile. Cholidocolithiasis often originates from cholelithiasis, these gallstones can migrate into the common bile duct and get stuck. Now, factors that contribute to gallstone formation include bile supersaturation, gallbladder dysmotility, other genetic predispositions. Um, remember the five Fs, fat, female, fertile, 40, fair skin from the previous lecture. These are all contributing factors to the development of gallstones. Now, how are patients going to present when they have cholecystitis? Patients may present with biliary colic, a severe episodic right upper quadrant pain, often postprandial. Jaundice can occur if the stones obstruct bile flow. It's critical to recognize signs of complications like cholangitis, or an infection of the bile duct, and pancreatitis. Now, jaundice is a sign of increased total bilirubin. How are we going to diagnose cholecystitis? Well, diagnosis involves a combination of laboratory and imaging studies. Elevated liver enzymes and bilirubin levels hint towards biliary obstruction. Ultrasound is the initial imaging study of choice. However, ERCP is not only diagnostic but therapeutic and can visualize and remove the stones. MRCP is a non-invasive alternative, particularly useful in complicated cases. But how are we going to treat cholecystitis? Well, the management of cholecystitis involves relieving the obstruction. This can be done endoscopically using ERCP, where stones are extracted and the sphincter of OD may be cut to facilitate drainage. ERCP is diagnostic and therapeutic, just like a LP in pseudotumor cerebri or your girlfriend's cooking. It tests your taste bud survival skills and then cures your desire to ever eat again. Too soon, too soon, too soon. In some cases, surgery, like laparoscopic cholecystectomy, is warranted, especially to prevent reoccurrence. But what are the complications of cholecystitis? Complications like acute cholangitis and pancreatitis require prompt recognition and management. Cholangitis can be life-threatening and it requires immediate antibiotic therapy and biliary drainage. Pancreatitis management is primarily supportive, but may require intervention if complications arise, as mentioned in our previous pancreatitis lecture. How are we going to prevent cholecystitis? Well, prevention revolves around managing risk factors like obesity, rapid weight loss, and certain medications. Dietary modifications can reduce recurrence risk. Educating patients about symptoms, recognition, and long-term follow-up is crucial. That pretty much sums up cholecystitis. Basically, it's a stone that gets stuck in the common bile duct. Cholecystitis is a common condition with potential serious complications early recognition, appropriate use of diagnostic tools, and timely management are key to favorable outcomes. So that's pretty much everything we have to say about cholecystitis. But the next lecture, 
we'll have to talk about one of the serious complications, cholangitis. As always, keep your head up. You're doing great. You're better than what you were yesterday. That's a lot. Learn something new today. Going to be a great doc. Sometimes you just got to hear that. <laughs>